Hi friends, it's Deanna here today. Uh, and today I'm bringing the book club top for kids. Um, we fell in love with the book club top for adults and we all wanted a kid's version. And guess what? We've got it. We've got a kid's version now. And what's even cooler is that we have the kids top and also a dress version. So you could either make it as a top or a dress because you know, kids want options. So um, we're gonna go ahead and sew that up today and I'm super excited because I honestly love this pattern. Um, so yes, but before I get started, let me remind you about our fun fan giveaway of $50 LEM Maggie certificate. And all you have to do is subscribe to our channel if you haven't and comment below. And then you will be entered for that giveaway. Every month we give us $50, so subscribe. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our bodices together and our sleeves together. We'll start with our bodice. Okay, so I wanna grab my middle piece and I'll put it right side up on my board. Then I'm gonna grab either the top, if you wanna start with the top, you can start with the bottom, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna grab the piece, the top piece right now, and I'm going to match right sides together those raw edges. So here is my one raw edge, I'm gonna attach it right sides together, and we're kinda of going up, we're going towards that middle piece. So I'm gonna pin right here, and I'm gonna pin right next to that middle piece right here. And then we're gonna basically turn and match those raw edges on the other side as well. So we've got here and here. And that middle edge right there, if you wanna put a pin right there in the middle, you can put a pin right there in the middle, you're gonna move it when you're sewing it, but if you wanna put it in there, um, honestly, I sew this up with a serger, but some people find it easier to sew up with the sewing machine so that they can keep that V nice and sharp. Now, it just depends on what look you're going for. If you want that V to be very sharp, then I would probably either sew it all with a sewing machine, or if you wanna just do that V right there, go a quarter of an inch in, do the V, sew it up first, and then go back and surge around it, you can do that, it's up to you. So what I would do, if that's what you wanna do, I would go on my sewing machine, come in a quarter of an inch, and sew up to the point, not all the way to the point, but a quarter of an inch away from the point, and then down, and then come around and sew it with the serger. Now I'm going to just go ahead and sew with the serger, which will give it not so much a pointy look, but more a little bit more rounded look. If you can see on mine, you can still see the point, but it kind of rounds a little bit. Uh, more because as I go with the serger, you kind of cut it around. There's, I mean, you could try to go straight and then come back over, but it's more difficult to do that on a serger than it is to do it on your uh, sewing machine. So it's really up to you. So we're gonna go ahead and sew that one up and you're gonna do this same steps for the front and the back. All right, I'm gonna show you how I do it on my serger. I fit it in there and go down making sure those right sides together. And then um, once I get over here to the end, see right there, make sure that this is pulled back and we're gonna go down and around. So you can kind of pull that bottom piece up a little bit so it can stay there so you can still eat it. Okay, so we're going down and then we're going coming around. Make sure you're not catching it underneath as you come around the edge. Raw edges together. And all the way down. And that gives you your shape right there. Once you steam it, these sides will go down. And see, it's a little bit more rounded. It's not as pointy, but it still looks really nice. All right, so now that we've got that top piece on, we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom piece. So right side up on my board, I'm gonna grab that bottom piece and I'm gonna lay it right on top, right sides together. Going to one side first, right sides together. Sorry about that. I don't even know why I apologize. 
You all like it when I sing, don't you? You're supposed to be agreeing with me right now. So I'm excited about this one. Isn't it so cute? It's pretty. I love that color too. I love the deep purple. I love purples. And um, I think it's amazing. And I think what's going to be really cool too is being that you can make the top. Um, I'm going to make another one too. And I'm probably going to make another one that kind of it's the same pattern that I'm wearing right now for my son so we can match. Ah, I love matching. I really do love matching. So I think I'm going to make the same exact one for my son and he's going to be thrilled because he still likes matching with me. So I'm excited. So now we're going to do the same thing for this one, but I'm going to try to go ahead and do that quarter inch here like I just told you about and let's see how that works. All out. right. I made sure that my pin is right there, right at that corner. We're going to start by going down making sure all the other pieces are out of the way over here in the back. And we get to that corner and we stop, remove that pin and turn the other way. Make sure the nothing is caught. All right. So I've made that V right there. And now I'm gonna go over to my serger and I'm gonna finish it all up. So here we go. Make sure those seams are together, the raw edges are together. I'm gonna remove that pin as I'm going around. Make sure to stay at your seam allowance. Okay, now I'm coming back the other way. it up and it's more of a pointed V right there I'm gonna steam that so it gives it a sharper look right there steam it up and there is the pointed V but I almost feel like it's not much different and especially if there's a flower right there you can't really tell there's not much difference in doing it this way than it is doing it that way. And I feel like it's easier to just keep going than doing the stopping and going right here in this corner. But I just wanted you to see it the both, both ways. All right, so now that that's sewn together, we're gonna go ahead and steam it. And what I wanna do is I'm going to steam them both going the same way. So these are all going to go down towards the middle. And these ones are gonna go up towards the top. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to top stitch. So if you're gonna to top stitch and you wanna use like a certain color, I think you can see the V a little bit better now that I steamed it. Here, let me steam it again so you can really look at it. And you can make your choice on the side if you wanna do it the hard way or the easy way. No, that is really hard. It's actually pretty easy. See, you can see the V a little bit more defined with the, with the other method. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top stitch and why I made them all go to the inside is because I'm gonna top stitch it in my blue because there's a blue right here. So that's why I made them go to the inside. There's no other reason. I'm gonna top stitch around those, but then I'm gonna show you now what, how to do the sleeve. And I'm doing the same thing with the sleeve. I'm piecing it together. So I grab my top of my sleeve, my middle of my sleeve. I'm putting it right side up on my board. I'm gonna grab my sleeve top. Okay, so there's a rounded edge and there's a sharp edge. The sharp edge is what's gonna you're gonna pin, not the rounded. If you can see, this is a, got a rounded edge to it. So that's not the one. Um, and we're gonna pin it, doing the same thing that we did. Uh, earlier you can choose to do it on your sewing machine or you can even you know if you are doing a zigzag stitch in your sewing machine obviously you can do that stretch stitch on your sewing machine or you can choose to do it on the serger so let's pretend we already sewed that one and then we're gonna do the bottom one as well I'm just kind of pinning them both at the same time right sides together and then I'm gonna sew them just like I did my bodice 
I'm gonna finish up my back bodice, sew that together, and I'm gonna top stitch along all these lines. Sometimes I like to top stitch, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I like the look of top stitch, sometimes I don't. And sometimes I'm just a little scared, honestly. If everything, if something looks good, like really good, and I'm like, ooh, I don't wanna mess it up by top stitching it, cause sometimes, you know, like top stitching can be kinda hard. And so I'll just leave it on top stitched, but then sometimes I'm like, we're going for it. We're gonna do it. And on this one, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna top stitch. It's gonna be top notch. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sew these up and top stitch, and then we'll be back to put it all together. All right, so now my uh, bodice and my sleeves and everything, they're all sewn together and they're all top stitched. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our front piece, put it face up, grab our back piece, put it face down, right sides together, right on top of each other, meeting at the shoulders. Shoulder seams. And you can get a bit of all these threads if you can find your scissors um, and get them out of the way. Very annoying. And you don't want them tickling you when you're wearing it or when your child is wearing it. All right, and so we're gonna go ahead and meet those shoulders and sew those shoulders together, right sides together. Good job. Okay, let's sew those shoulders. Once shoulders are sewn together, we're gonna open it and here's our arm side. We're gonna grab our sleeve, one of our sleeves, we're gonna fold it right sides together and find, I mean, doesn't matter if it's right sides together, the wrong sides together, we're just gonna find that top point. So you're just folding it together and finding that top point. I'm gonna put that top point right on my shoulder seam. Shoulder seam. And then we're gonna go and meet up those uh, raw edges and match up those seams, okay? Take your time when you're sewing. If you want your seams to match up really nicely. As I say that, I am the worst at matching up stuff like that. I don't know why I had such a hard time. If you have any tips and tricks, give us the tips and tricks, all of them. All of them. I am like really in a singing mood today. I don't know why. It's because I love this pattern, that's why. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and attach that sleeve. We're just going around and, and pinning right sides together. And now we're gonna go ahead and sew all the way around that sleeve cap and we're gonna do the same for the other sleeve. So we're doing both sleevey sleeves. Let's do it. All right, my sleeves are on. So now once your sleeves are on, we're gonna turn it wrong side, right sides together, sorry, right sides together, and we are going to sew those side seams. Now, mine looks very short because I am doing the dress option. If you're doing the top option, you are going to, yours is gonna be obviously a little bit longer, um, unless you're doing it um, midi, what is it called? Uh, I don't know what it's called. You know, like when it's short and it shows your belly button. What is it called? I don't remember. But anyway, unless you're doing that, it's gonna be longer. I am doing a three quarter sleeve, sleeve. And then I'm doing the same thing for the other side, pinning those sides together, meeting at the seams so you can try to match them up. But everyone's better at it than I am. You know, with uh, seam matching and stripe matching and all that, all that. Usually when I don't try, things turn out so much better than when I try. Like I try and it, like I do it the opposite. I'm like, what? I made no sense. But then when I'm like not even trying and then I'm like, oh, look, it turned out perfectly. So you know what, moral of the story, don't even try. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go ahead and sew those side seams together. All right, sides are sewn together and your top is done now. I'm not, not done, we still need that neck band. So if you're making um, just the top, you would move on to doing the neck band. But since I am making um, the dress version, 
Uh, oh, and hem in the sleeves. So I'm making the dress version. We're gonna move on to making our skirt. So I'm gonna grab my two skirt pieces. Here's one and here's the other. And we're gonna put them on right sides together, matching at that shorter raw edge. Right here. And we're gonna pin those together. At the raw edge and then we're gonna sew that raw edge to create one continuous um, skirt there's one side and we're gonna do the same thing for the other side right sides together I'm gonna go ahead and sew you can sew with your preferred method of uh, stretch stitch again This, uh, if they're not even, it's because you didn't cut correctly. But no, it's it's because it gets getting caught. This fabric keeps getting caught on my board, so I keep like pulling, tugging at it. All right, sew those raw edges together. All right, now that my skirt is sewn together at the two sides, I'm gonna actually find my halves. So those are my sides and I'm going to put the two sides together and I'm going to go to one side and I'm going to do like a little notch to mark my sides. That's how I mark my fabric. Um, it's Those notches are going to be eaten up once I sew it together. So it should be fine. And now we're going to go ahead and grab this skirt and gather it the width of the bodice. Gonna gather it the width of the bodice. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two rows of uh, basting stitches at the top of my skirt. So I'm just gonna go on my sewing machine and do a basting stitch, which is like the longest stitch you have in your sewing machine. And I'm just gonna go around once and then around again. Um, and then, um, then we're gonna gather. All right, once you have your two sets of gathering stitches in, it's just long basting stitches. We're gonna go ahead and gather the skirt to the width of the bodice. So I go right here where my gathering, my basting stitch is, and I'm going to pull on one way, and I like to go all the way to that middle piece. So I'm going one way this way to that middle piece, right there, so you can see it right there, that mark. And then I'm pull, I'll pull this way to go to the middle piece again. So we'll go this way first, and if we wanna grab both um, of the stitches that we made, both of those gatherings uh, of those, uh, um, grab the thread of both of those basting stitches we made, and then just kind of, you're just pulling, gathering towards the one side. You're gonna gather all the way. Just pull those gathers over. And this will be my one half. So I'll know that here's my half. So I'll know that this has to be gathered this width right here, because that's half the bodice. So I'm going, I still have a little ways to go. So I'm just still pulling and gathering. Where is that half right there? Almost there, we're almost there. It really isn't that hard to gather with the basting stitch. You're just pulling and gathering. So as you can see here, see where my mark is? That's my front. And this mark right here is my back. So I need to make sure that that is the width. From mark to mark, there's a half width. So now I'm done gathering this one side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and gather the other way. I'm gonna grab the other side, see? And I'm gonna go this way. So this one's a little bit farther up ahead, so I'm gonna pull out it first and now we're going to pull them evenly and we're going to go this way and we're gathering I'm going to go ahead and finish pulling at it and gathering it so that they're the width of the bodice see where is my mark here's my mark this should be this is my one half, so this should be my other half, so I still have a ways to go. So I'm gonna continue to do it, and then we'll put it together. All right, once it's all gathered, the width of the skirt, 
we're going to even them all out and this is when having two layers comes in so handy because then it's it doesn't unravel as easier as easy as it does if you only have one and it just makes it for even better ruffles than if you had just one layer okay so now that they're all pretty much even we're going to find our, our we're going to attach our skirt to our bodice so we're going to grab our bodice and we can fit our bodice right into our skirt if you want to do that okay so here's my bodice and the right side of my bodice oh you know we forgot forgot to mark our bodice where's our front and where's our back we're going to match our side seams of our bodice we're going to go to the front and it really does not matter which one's the front or the back because the skirt is just it's just uh the same on the front of the back and the back sorry and then we're going to go towards our back and mark our back so now we have those marks so we're going to mark our our pin our sides together our seams and then our front let's find it you know I marked my bodice somewhere around here that's too far over that's too far that way it's got to be right here here it is I knew I had marked it and pin that side I mean that's the front then pin the other side right sides together remember the right side of the skirt is touching the right side of the bodice and then that back same thing Whoop. find that mark and match it and now we can go ahead and pin our our skirt our raw edges together make sure your ruffles are nice and sticking straight up and you can pin those raw edges together to the bodice so let me go ahead and put some more pins here and then we'll move on to sewing it together and that will be basically it all right so now that our skirt is all pinned guess what i forgot i just ran out of clear elastic and something that is this heavy you might want to put some clear elastic at the waist to help the weight not pull the dress down as the you know, child is wearing it now um so i'm gonna have to go back in and attach the clear elastic once i get some so i'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it now because you probably prepared better than i did and you do have a clear elastic honestly i thought i did and then i go to grab it and i cannot find it and it's probably somewhere underneath my sewing desk or something so yes but i'm gonna show you so if and we're gonna grab the clear elastic and we're going to cut it the width of the bodice plus about an inch or so that way or two so that way you have something to hold on to you can either go ahead and attach it first to your bodice edge if that's what you want to do with a zigzag stitch or you can go ahead and put the elastic right here on top of your skirt and as you're sewing your skirt all the way around you're also attaching the elastic to the skirt so you're attaching it to the skirt so you'll be attaching all three things together and i find that way easier to do than having to do the bodice first and then attach it um, but i'm gonna have to after i'm done uh later on i'm gonna come back and just fold it up like this again once i get my elastic i'm gonna fold it back up and then zigzag stitch it on um on top of my seam and it'll be fine but I find it that it's easier to do if I'm doing all three of them together. So I would just put my elastic right there on top and sew all the way around. You don't stretch your clear elastic. It's just there to give you stability and so that your dress doesn't just like bleh, go all the way down. So we're gonna go ahead and sew all the way around that, uh, the gathers attaching the skirt to the bodice. So as I'm sewing my skirt to my bodice, you know, you're removing those pins and you're making sure that the raw edges are matching. And you're also making sure that your gathers are nice and even and they're not falling in when they're coming, when you're going to sew them. Sometimes ruffles, they wanna go like down 
and you don't want them to do that you want them to stay nice and straight as you're sewing i like my ruffles to be face up so that i can see them as i'm sewing them and i'm making sure that they're getting caught in there and like i said they're nice and even the really good thing about doing two rows of of gathers is that it helps keep them straight up and it's easier for them to stand up as you're trying to sew them another thing is make sure you're not catching anything else underneath like none of the dress or the uh the bodice because then you might cut it with your serger and we don't want to do that so i'm going to go ahead and keep going all the way around sewing this skirt to the bodice and then we'll do our neckband hem and be done all right once it's sewn together we're going to go ahead and pull those basting stitches out out you really honestly a lot of times if you just pull they come out really easily and sometimes they don't want to so you just kind of have to play with them and pull them out um but they usually shouldn't be too hard to come out so you just kind of pull at them and go around the whole skirt and pull them out and then um we're gonna go ahead and move on to do our next part but i just wanted to get these out of the way first and i thought i'll do them while i'm talking to you all what kind of fabric are you using what are you make who are you making them for um are you matching your little one um all these answer all these questions these are must know questions i need to know these are need to know questions Okay, so now I'm gonna throw all that away and our dress is looking so cute. Isn't that so cute? This is adorable. Oh, so cute, super cute, I want it. Can I have it? It won't fit me, it's a little too small, but it's super cute, can't wait. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our, gosh, that is so cute. We're gonna go ahead and do our neckband. So we're gonna grab, the first thing I like to do with my neckband is I like to fold it right side wrong sides together first to give it that crease so that way when i go to put it on it's easier now we're going to open it up and we're going to sew those two raw edges together right sides together right here at the short raw edge once that's sewn together at the raw edge we're going to go ahead and open it up and fold it at that crease that we already made a little bit ago. I'm going to use a pin and, and pin that back seam right here. And then I'm going to fold and go towards the front. Here's my back seam. I'm going to go towards the front and here's my front seam, my front. So I'm going to just do a little notch like I did earlier and pin because I'm gonna use the pin to pin it onto my dress. And then I'm gonna match that front and back and go to one side and mark. Somebody's driving by with their radio on really loud. Oh no, it's the ice cream truck. Oh man, those people are so smart. It is super hot today and they're playing a loud music and I can hear them all the way in my house and I just wanna go out there and get myself an ice cream cone. I'm about to just leave you all now. If I wasn't talking to you, all, it's like moral support. Don't do it. Oh man, you know, here I am getting sidetracked. I love uh, if you if you ask me what my favorite ice cream truck ice cream is, I love the coconut ice cream. Do you which one's your favorite? Tell me which one's your favorite. I want to know. I love the coconut one. Oh my word! That just brought back like ba uh, baby memories, not baby memories, um, childhood memories. Always running out and trying to grab some ice cream, and, and they don't come around here very much. And I'm wondering why because. We have a lot of kids in our neighborhood. I'm like, I'd be out there like every single day because there's no way they don't make enough money to come around here because there's a lot of children out there. But I don't know. I feel like nowadays we don't buy as many uh, things from the ice cream truck. 
I don't know, do you buy from the ice cream truck? And if you do, what ice cream is your favorite? All right, I'm matching my shoulder seams on my bodice and I'm going to the front. I'm gonna quarter my bodice now that I'm sitting here thinking about ice cream and I bet you're sitting there thinking about ice cream as well. Mmm. Oh, I could actually go for some ice cream right now because it is so hot. Ice cream does the soul good. I'm gonna match those two fronts and go to the side. I am, don't think I'm gonna be able to get back in track. I think I'm just gonna be t thinking about ice cream until I actually have some ice cream. Thank you, ice cream truck. If he comes back around, I'm gonna be like, it's gonna be so hard to not to not run out there like a little child screaming, I want some ice cream. So now that we mark our quarters, we're gonna put our band right onto our bodice matching those quarters. So we're gonna match the back to the back seam. And then I'm gonna match side seams and the right sides together. And the front. And the other side. And now that they're matched, we're gonna go ahead and sew it on. All right, I put my neck band in there. And what I like to do is I like to do a little, just a start, <clears throat> a couple of stitches to start. I'm gonna grab my seam, my uh, quarter point right here. I used, I used my ring finger and my uh, thumb to grab, hold right there, and then I use my other two fingers um, to grab up top. I have five fingers, I do, but Pinky just does nothing. And then um, with this hand, I kind of guide it. And then I do the same thing for the next quarter point. Match that quarter point, stretch the neck band a little bit so it fits and go. Do the same thing for the next quarter point. Match the quarter points. Pull the dress out of the way so it doesn't get caught in there. Make sure it's straight and go. And then the last quarter point. Straight. And now my neck band is done. We're gonna go ahead and hem and we'll be done. All right, always make sure that you steam your neck band and that helps it be nice and even. And then it, the tail, what I like to do is I like to put the tail right over the seam and do a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine and just sew that tail right onto my seam show you that show you that and it's in there nice and tucked in so our neck band is done now all we need to do to finish our dress is to hem. And we do a half an inch allowance for our hem. So I'm just folding it half an inch. I don't measure my hems, I'm sorry. Do you measure your hems? Tell me if you measure your hems. Or do you just fold and call it a day? Just look at it. It looks like half an inch. And I'm good. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for my skirt, half an inch allowance. If you're doing the top version, half an inch allowance as well on your top. So we're gonna go ahead and hem and we are done. And my hem, I'm just gonna do it on my uh, cover stitch. You can either do it on your cover stitch, you can do it on your sewing machine with a stretch stitch, or you can do it double needle. Um, it is up to you, even if you want a rolled hem on your dress, um, this is up to you, however you want to hem your uh, dress or your top. 
So I'm going to finish hemming. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything that I did. Um, comment below. Let me know who you're making this for. Comment, like, subscribe, share with your friends so that they will be able to make this awesome pattern. Thank you for coming along with me. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. I'm going to show you my beautiful little dress one more time. My word, this would be so beautiful, like on adult size. I might have to do this, hack one of my tops and make myself a dress because this is just adorbs. Super cute. I love it. All right. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Come like us on Facebook or Instagram so we can see what you're making and you can see what we're making. I hope you have a great rest of your day again. I said that like three times already and I'll see you all next time.